So what is behind this term lean layout? So what we see in many companies is the following. Let's assume these are one, two, three, four, five, six different assembly stations. Yeah, and let's assume we have a batch production with, let's say one, two, three operators, four, five, six operators working in this working environment. What happens quite often is, of course, we have big lot sizes in between the stations. So that means if you have a big box and this box is full, we have to move the box from station to station. So we need additional handling steps to get the parts from A to B and further from B to C and so on and so on, right? So we have something like six different handling steps just to get all the parts from A to B. And what is most often, so if we have a forklift driver somewhere around, that means we have to, if this box is full or this box is empty, what he has to do is he has to call the forklift driver to come to bring the parts from A to B. And this is all this kind of call offs and all those additional handling steps. This is this is waste and this is something we really don't want to see in any production. And more than this, if we have something like this batch production, so if you look on a diagram like this, let's say this is this is the time <coughs> and that's the volume. Yeah, and let's say we have that is today and this is plus five years. So in between today and five years, let's say most, most of the products life cycle look like something like this, right? So we have something like a peak close to today or maybe also today, we have kind of ramp up before. We don't care about this right now. But what is most important is that we spend a lot of money to have, have this. We spend a lot of money. Let's say we spend a million euros to be able to or to be capable to produce with this line at a hundred percent capability capacity. Yeah, though. But if you look on the on the life cycle, we are not producing a hundred percent over the, all the time. So what is happening, let's say in, <clears throat> what is this? Let's say this is in plus two years. In two years, we don't need 100%, we need just 60% of the capacity. That means if we have, for example, 10 operators today on the peak, in a couple of years, we just need something like, let's say six operators, which is 60% of 10 operators. And more than that, in let's say in four years, we need just 10% of the capacity, which is maybe one operator, though we invested a million euro in this assembly line, which is a lot of money. And what we have with this here, so we see we have a lot of, let's say the waste of, let's call it movement, we need a lot of space, right? Because we have all these boxes and maybe you have also some buffer because the forklift driver is somewhere, somewhere not here where he should be. So we need some buffer in between. So we need even more space on all the stations. This is, this is a mess, right? And you're not really seeing what is happening if you're the production responsible. For example, this is, let's say, this is the production responsible. Let's call him the, the big boss. If he's here, he's not able to see what's happening here, right? Maybe here people are facing a lot of waiting time or sleeping, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, so we have a lot of movement, we have a lot of space and we are not flexible. And why are we not, not so flexible? Because I just said we have to be. We invested in this assembly line to be able to produce with 10 operators, with six operators, with one operator. Sometimes we have to produce with eight operators, sometimes with 
for operators. So this is what we need. We have to be highly flexible on this assembly line. But all the time when we produce parts here, we need at least an operator doing step number one. We need at least one operator doing step number two, three, four, five and six. So we need all the time all the operators. So if we do not have those operators, cause we just need 10% of the capacity, so we're getting rid of all the other operators. We have one operator who has to produce the first part, then walk here to assemble part number two, walk here, go to step number four, go to step number five, go to step six. And once he finished, he has to walk back to station number one. And this is, this is a mess. So what do we do? How do we improve this? So this is not, not the lean layout, but let's say this is where many companies come from. So how do we get to a lean layout? Let's say we have a first step and we try to get one of these straight assembly lines, right? So we have station one, two, three, four, five, six. As the stations are close, we don't need big boxes in between because we have the one piece flow. So we can get rid of this and we can have some small boxes, right? Something like this. So we have station number one, two, three, four, five, and station number six. And we can produce with one operator or with two operators, four, five, or even with all the operators, right? And we put full box here and we have the customer packaging here, which has to be so when we start with one operator, he could do the whole, the whole cycle starting with the raw material, going to station number one, station number two, station three, four, five, six, finishing the part and walking back to station number one. So this is already far better than it was here because we are now able to balance the line. Let's say we want to operate with two operators. So we have one operator here and another one here. So he's able to do station four, five, six, walking back. And he's doing station number one, two, three, and then walking back. And we can put another one inside. So according to wherever we are in the product life cycle, we can put different number of operators inside. So we are, we are flexible, right? And that is very important nowadays. Maybe not today, because today we need 100% capacity. But in a couple of years, when the, when the demand drops, maybe in three years, it's very important that we can produce according to the customer demand. And we have to produce this with the, with the number of operators, which is matching the, the output which we need. So let's get back to this straight assembly line. So still in this assembly line we have, let's call it long walking distances, right? So we have all of this walking distance inside. So this is not nice. That is not what we want, but it's already getting closer to, to lean layout. <coughs> so what can we do? So let's, let's try to make a new layout, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. So what do we have here? So we have station one, two, three, four, five, six. And with this, we are getting more close to to kind of lean layout. Yeah, you might know this from the open U shape, which you can read in books. Let's say it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So you have something like Operator operating on station one, he can do station one, two, three. Let's remove this. Station three, four, five, six, and walking back to station number one. So the walking distance is almost almost zero, right? So we have the raw material and we have the pallet of finished goods. Right? But we also can produce with two operators, let's say. We need more parts, so we need to, so we put two operators inside the line, and he's doing station three, four, five, and walking back, and he's doing station one, two, six, and walking back. 
are we produced with three operators? So another operator doing something like, I don't know, it's, it depends on the, on the balancing, right? So another operator doing station five, two, five, two, and he's doing station one, six, one, six, and he's doing station three, four, and so on. So it's already more flexible, which is, as I said, one of the most important terms you have to achieve when doing a lean layout. So you're highly flexible and also if you compare the space which we need with the space of a straight assembly line and the space we had right at the beginning, we are already far better, aren't we? But let's let's go further. Let's say this is this is not the, the, the final layout which we want to achieve. Let's go a bit further. Let's say in our production line we have something like one, two, three. Four, five, six. But we want to have those straight, straight assembly lines. And you can also put those marks or tape, use tape to, to mark those straight lines on the floor and make sure to put no parts inside the gangway. All the parts have to be stored outside the assembly line. Try to do something like like this and fulfill 100% of straight assembly line. Because what we want to have is to have all the operators close. Because when the operators are close, it's very easy for us to do a line balancing activity for those operators, right? And even more, if we are now the production responsible, I showed it at the beginning, he's right now, he's not able to figure out what's happening, what's happening here, right? But if you look at this, if this is the production responsible, the, let's, let's call him again the boss, he's able to have a look on all his operators and all his processes. And if you have some, some waiting time on this station, for example, you can see and you can detect waiting time directly and can react, do another line balancing. So we also call this, this is a kind of Kind of visualization and we say visualization equals quality quality management and that is very important honestly so if you can visualize your processes as much as possible you will increase your quality but let's get back to the layout yeah, if you say this is station one, two, three, four, five, six, you can think even further. Let's say this is this is part A or product A, but you're, you, you're producing more parts in your factory. Maybe you also produce another part, which is a completely different product. But what you can do is put it to the same, same straight layout and arrange it according to the principle I just described. So also here you can have operators according to the demand of the customer and balance the line according to the customer demand. Even if the demand is very low, you can do something like this. You have an operator doing assembling part number one, part two, part three, going further, assembling product B, part one, two, three, four, five, six, so finalizing the part, going back to product A, station four, five, six, and finishing the cycle. All right, so what do we have here? That is the highest level of flexibility. Let's call it flex, flexibility, space. What, what else do we have? We have, um, we have, the, we have the one piece flow. One piece flow, of course, for this you need the, the common tuck tie and, and stuff like this, but if you have a one piece flow, you can reduce the space you need tremendously. Keep this in mind. And of course, due to the one piece flow, we don't have to move, move boxes from station to station, right? Before we had, we needed the forklift driver to move all the materials from A to B. But for the new layout, we do not need any forklift driver. So this is 
let's say something like and first idea of lean layout. I hope that is helpful. Have fun.